Hi guys and welcome back to Chelsea Green TV. My name is Michelle. And my name is Nina and welcome back to another episode of Carefree Queens where as you know already and if you don't know, welcome. Uh, this is the show where we talk about everything there is to know about Chelsea, just our own opinions and just mainly having a very kind of chill out conversation about how things are going around the club. Absolutely. Uh, last episode we... We sort of promised you guys some things, didn't we? But uh, to be honest, the weekend just went by so fast. If you didn't watch the last episode, um, Nina and I said that we were going to film this episode together at Nina's place because I was staying with her over the weekend. But it really worked out that way, did it, Nina? Yeah, definitely. But it was a crazy weekend and there's plenty that we want to catch you guys up on. So even though the format is the same as it usually is, we still have uh, some some cool things to tell you about this weekend. So <laughs> Michelle, how was London for you this weekend? Oh, it was lovely. It was absolutely lovely. I flew in from Tenerife, as some of you guys might know. Uh, went straight to Nina's place um in called it a day and then we i went to Cobham to see if i could get a glimpse of the players and then fast forward to saturday we can i just say i just want to interrupt and tell people whoever doesn't know michelle i actually got to witness it with my eyes because i knew she was a crazy chelsea fan but this girl after being away for two weeks came to england immediately after holiday um and went to Cobham first thing in the morning waited there the whole day on her own with an umbrella because it was raining and it was cold and she didn't actually get anything that she wanted out of it however the dedication was there and then the next day again we decided to spend the whole day um around the bridge just walked around had coffee just enjoyed the pubs and we actually met some players didn't we who do you want to who do you want to <laughs> We want to put our first. Uh, so we were very, 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 thank you for the really kind words, though. It's um, true, though. Um, we, uh, we were very fortunate to meet Mudrik and Kulabali. And I can I just say that there's nothing more joyful to meet people, whether it being strangers or someone you admire, or someone you look up to. I genuinely love when you can tell that people are are actually happy to meet you do you know what i mean like regardless mm -hmm. of how long the meeting is and you could like Woodrick is a guy of a very few words like i don't think he said anything but like his face said enough like he was like he's just so sweet wasn't he like that just that's warm that's warming my heart really and kulabali as well what a guy what absolutely a guy. And these are players that, you know, they're new arrivals. Obviously, koulibaly has been here a bit longer than Mudrik has, and Mudrik's only been here kind of for literally five minutes. But still, the, the actual desire they had to come over and, you know, interact with fans and just really kind of, you know, smile and just be very genuine was, it was really, really nice. And I actually thought when I saw Mudrik that he'd be starting on Saturday um, mm. against Everton, but clearly that wasn't the case, and we'll, we'll get onto that a little bit later because obviously we spent our last episode kind of talking about how Mudrik is obviously becoming a lot more confident he's showing a lot more he's got this um, fantastic just presence on the pitch and obviously he hasn't been given the opportunity to shine through completely now but when we met him we thought yeah you're gonna be playing later so good luck for that didn't happen yeah. though but no. yeah like you mentioned Kula Bali as well another very um, chill guy who didn't have the easiest start to the uh, year when he came in but yeah, kind of true. gradually built on performances didn't he and then when he did start he did kind of have some outstanding games in the recent months and uh you know he deserved his kind of place in the starting lineup obviously with Thiago Silva out and injured he stepped up as well um but genuinely just really really cool guy and of course we'll talk about the game a little bit later but he is getting some blame for the goal that we conceded as well um, to equalise the 2-2 draw. We didn't get away with three points, did we? But then that would have been the almost perfect day, which would have been too good oh, to be true. It would have. Uh, and that sort of brings me back to the curse thing, doesn't it? I, <sighs> guys, I can assure you that I won't be showing up within the next month. So hopefully, hopefully we'll clear of the... <laughs> no, but do you know what? That game was such a roller coaster and... 
I don't know if you can tell by my voice, but it's still a bit sore and rusty after the game. I just went through it all. I have never experienced a Chelsea game like that. And I've gone to quite a few, but I've been mm. very, very unfortunate and very unlucky with the games I have gone to. That was the went through it all. We were pressing. I was very impressed. I was screaming from the top of my lungs. We had goals, then one got disallowed. Like it was just all over the place. A roller coaster. Yes. And what did we think of the lineup? Because I thought it looked decent. I think I would have started Madrid because following on from his previous yes. performance against Leicester, you know, he got an offside goal and he got an assist. Um and I think that is enough to really kind of show your gaffer that you are you know, contributing to the game, regardless of whether it's disallowed or not, you know, you've still done something that is worthy. You know, the next one will be yes. will be allowed. You know, it will be a goal. Um, and I don't think that it's the right call to bench a player after they put up such a performance, especially when they're new as well, especially when you're kind of uh, bringing them back slowly into the game, because, of course, Madrid yeah. has had time out from football um, in, in the past year or so. And uh, he's kind of coming back and he's obviously coming with a real ask as well. He was a very hyped up player player during the transfer window and we're not going to go on uh, too much about him because we did speak about him in the last episode but I really was surprised that he didn't start so it was a strange yeah. call although Pulisic did start and uh, me and Michelle uh, were probably uh, he divided opinion didn't he in that game but Absolutely. me and Michelle Absolutely. personally Absolutely. were quite impressed with how he started out in that game and of course you've got all these wingers now Potter's experimenting and rotating them and you know he's still yet to try out what works and what doesn't uh, but Pulisic was subbed off for Gallagher, wasn't he? Um, after think, we went one nil up, I think when he swapped on Gallagher, I think that should have been Modric rather. Absolutely, than exactly. Probably want to build on on good performance and and like you said, you know, it didn't really make much sense. I get that you want to get Pulisic back into the to the squad again after an injury, and I I was pleasantly surprised with his with his work ethic, but I think you should have. I think he should have given given Madrid some minutes, absolutely. Um, and he didn't. And that was disappointing. And one nil up in the 60th or so minute isn't a score that gives you the confidence. Oh, you've won the game and you've got three points out of it. It doesn't stop there, and it shouldn't stop there. Mm-hmm. And that's where Potter got it wrong because when you're one nil up. Bring on Madrid. You've got a hundred mil nearly sitting on the bench with such creativity and such a desire to play, with a point to prove as well, because he's obviously fighting to earn that spot there. Why not bring him on? We need an attacking threat in that moment. You want to bring it 2 0 up. You want to come out maybe even 3 0 on top, especially when we are battling with such a poor goal difference all season as well. So there wasn't much thought behind that, you know. Gallagher. If, when Gallagher comes on, you know, of course, he like runs about and 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 etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But Mudrick is a player that provides the attacking threat, is offensive, you know, tests the players, tests the defenders, and can break Absolutely. up um, the defensive line. Um, and we were punished for it because they equalised, and then we were lucky to get that penalty. You know, uh, Reese James was brought down in the penalty area, and of course, I do want to say although Havertz, Havertz is now scored three goals in three games and even though two of those are penalties I think that is especially important that we have somebody that can take penalties now because of course after Jorginho's departure we were like well who takes penalties now of course Havertz missed his confidence as well yeah no and of course Havertz missed um the first penalty that he took but then he went back to the penalty spare uh penalty air uh, penalty spot uh, composed himself, took the penalty and scored it. Um, yeah. So the fact that his confidence is building as well and he's obviously being trusted with that position there to take penalties and to score them, then great. It looks like we do have our, you know, our next penalty taker there. So yeah. that's good for him as well. Um, but yeah, what else did you think about the game in terms of uh, players? Obviously, we said the substitutions were quite poor, a bit questionable from Potter in terms of that, um, not bringing and not using kind of the best out of that bench and well, that's speaking the thing, of the it? bench I just want to say one more thing speaking of the bench we know Kante was there didn't we we saw Kante warming up you know we were applauding yeah, him that's warming that's up funny. on the sidelines and I don't think Kante couldn't have handled 10 minutes in that game Kante Absolutely is a monster no I cannot he- wrap my head around why you would not bring him on even like we know what Kante can bring to the bri- to the pitch yeah but even like just for the sake of the atmosphere, yeah. even for the sake of like 
why would you put him in the squad if you're not gonna like introduce do you know what i mean like it could have yeah. brought out hopes like it could have just been it could have been a really really good thing and it could have been a good way to change the scenery and like when Absolutely. you yeah let's let's stick to the substitutions because because there's there's a few more things to be said um when you sit back and try to defend your three points are you not more or less guaranteed that it's gonna go horribly wrong eventually because you literally just sit sit back and you just wait you just hope for the best and you just pray that you know the bus is parked well enough and we were dominating that game and we should have been relying on being we should have relied on continuing to being the reluctant why well, can't I speak we should have continued to be the dominating part and not swap mm -hmm. on um players who were meant to be defensive rather than attacking I get you don't want to put everything at stake but really not everything's at stake when you're dominating a game like that uh, you have the whole stadium with you as well what an atmosphere honestly um mm -hmm. I would have loved to see Nani Madue kick come on we both like him. He's confident on the ball. He he brings and he has qualities that reminds me of Madrid's. Like they're confident, they take on players, they're fast. That would have been lovely to see. And I don't agree with the substitution, and I don't think I've been agreeing with it for quite a while, to be honest. Absolutely. And that's kind of part of the mentality as well, though, isn't there? Because when you go 1-0 up, like this is what is separating us, for example, from Arsenal right now. Because when Arsenal go 1 or 2-0 up, they want more goals. They're hungry for more goals and they all come out 3-4 even out on top. And that is what we don't do. When we score, and it's been happening a lot um, over the season, when we score, like you said, we sit back, we defend, we pass the ball along the back line, keep it safe, you know, kind of freak out when they counter us because then it could go horribly wrong but is that really the right way to play why don't you you know push uh, more for those goals you know come out two three on top then you can park the bus then you can bring on the players that you know you want to give some more minutes to that you want to sort of experiment with etc etc um however like you said it's not the right call to make in the 60th or so minute to, to to bring on a player that's not going to create that attacking threat for you and there's not going to bring you more goals and we were punished for it we can't keep waiting around for penalties or set pieces to rely on us scoring goals we've got to be hungry for it and we've got to stop being oh playing well for 30 minutes playing well for one half and we've really got to start playing for the whole game and it's really not over until that final whistle is blown because like we saw there we go we shared the points and like oh you said we easily God. could have not and I know possession doesn't mean everything however when you look at the statistics of that game when you look at the possession and even the shots Everton really didn't have much but they seized the opportunity when we went wrong and mm -hmm. they punished us for it and that's what happened and obviously we said uh, we met Kula Bali and we loved meeting him but then he got plenty of stick on uh, Twitter, on social media about that goal. Um, however, my the only kind of excuse I can find for that is that he already had a yellow card. Um, I don't think he wanted to bring the player down in the penalty area in case um, that obviously was a penalty call. Um, however, he could have done better. He did um, get outpaced really easily. He was outplayed very easily. Um, and it's a shame because had that game been 2-1, and I said this on Saturday, we would have been placing praise on every single one of those defenders' names. Because yeah. Quite frankly, for the most part, they did do a fantastic job. And Absolutely. even Koulibaly and Fafana were, you know, playing these long balls up until the wings and switching it up rather than, you know, playing it on the ground and side to side, etc. They were really trying to push uh, the ball up there. I saw Fafana dribbling sort of past the halfway. Wow, how it up until the that end. How beautiful. Like, I can just see it in my hair right now. That was so beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's what you want to see. Go for it, you know. Go for it and, and just really, yeah. really try it out. So, of course, it's a 
a shame that he came off with an injury again. I think that it's just so unlucky for him in his first season at Chelsea to come out with the that many injuries already. It's such a shame because he did such a fantastic job coming in for Thiago Silva and, you know, he even got a goal. I think he's pretty much tried to head the ball into the goal from every single set piece that we've had like, yeah. from the corner. And, um, you know, he's it's translated once already. So I think for him, it's uh, it's it's really crushing now, isn't it, to, to have some sort of really good performances to, to build on that and then it comes crashing down because you're injured again so it's it's a real shame and I think it I think it affects the players way more than we think like football is, is physicality no doubt mm. but it's I I would more or less argue that is as I'm much saying. physicality is it's the same amount of mentality like mm. it I really I really think you um you're going to have a hard time bouncing back. And that was talking about Conte again. That was why I was really excited to just get a glimpse, get a glimpse of him to see where are you mentally? Are you are you at the same level? Are you near the same level? Because I think it's too much to expect to be at the same level after such a long injury. But you get ex- excited when you see him in the, in, the, in, the, in the squad and then to not put him on to not show people where he's at literally five minutes mm. it's just um yeah when it's going horribly wrong for me it more or less always comes down to putter because uh, we've say it, said this many times at the end of the day it comes down to his decisions but um i want to i want to briefly talk about Kovacic as well because like you said more or less every single player put in a shift. If this has been three points, we would have um, praised more or less every every player. And mm-hmm. how phenomenal was that rocket from him? Imagine if that had been a goal. Um, yeah. So thought about him and... He loves to... If he scores, he loves for it to be phenomenal pretty much something out of the ordinary doesn't he he loves to have a goal that is just absolutely mind-blowing and you sit there and you think how did you even do that like how does that even happen and uh, like you said I think Kovacic looks really comfortable alongside Enzo in the middle and that's a really like interesting intriguing pair to me and I've said this before I think Enzo Fernandez is absolutely incredible and if anyone had doubts about paying that price tag in the you know the last day of the transfer window I think you don't need to worry about that anymore because I think he is making every single penny worthwhile with every minute he plays even in games like that where you know, we can't really bring out much of the positives because we've shared a point or we've lost points. And it's hard to to really, you know, kind of praise a player when, you know, things aren't going so well with the results wise. However, he is inarguably having a, a phenomenal presence in that in that midfield. And before he's even received the ball, the ball, he's already scanned his surroundings and he already knows where that ball is being released into, whether it's a space, whether he, he's, you know, passing it over to one of the wingers, whether he's passing it over the defensive line and going for an assist. He is yeah. full of surprise and unpredictability. And when he surprises us, you know, when even we don't know what we're going to do, it's just so exciting and refreshing to see that Absolutely. he's obviously going to be shaking up his opponents as well. And to see that consistency as well, because I don't think, yeah, he's made the fair few mistakes here and there as you would. He's still a young player, even though he's had more experience playing for the big tournaments than than other players his age has. He still had a fantastic journey since he started and it can only get better really so it's exciting to see that we made the right decision with paying that much money for him obviously being a world cup winner as well you're coming in with that mentality you're coming in and you're sharing it with the with the squad you're sharing it with the rest of the players and he's obviously really really crucial to our squad right now isn't he i think it was really interesting to see him um so I try to be very honest, and I uh, I don't know it all, and I am still learning every single game. Every person I talk to teach me something new, and I actually didn't know that you would define him as a box box player. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was trying to keep notice of that throughout the game, and I thought it was really interesting to see because he really was, he really was. I noticed a few times he was covering for. Kulabali because he was back before Kulabali was and I just I thought that was so interesting to see mm. so I am um, I'll be honest I viewed him differently than I viewed him 
throughout all the games. And I think it's so funny for you to say that with the prize tag because Nina has been speaking to my boyfriend and Philip personally thinks that we've been dropping way too much money during this transfer window and especially on Inso. So they had a little chit chat and I'm going to pass this on to him. <laughs> <laughs> No, I actually, um, he was a risk, wasn't he? Because it was a lot of money and there was a lot of talk during the transfer window if this was going to blossom or if it was just like, you know, one of those where you act upon. Do you know what I mean? Mm, like, yeah. I think I think he was one of those people who's worth taking a risk on. And I'm, I'm very happy to see that he's literally just starting game in, game out because he really is creating a lot on the midfield mm. he's being a defensive player he's being attacking like he's literally just all over the place and absolutely like he's good when he sits deep he's good when he plays further up the pitch so you've got a bit of an all-rounder there and that's really what you need and imagine a fully fit Kante and Enzo in the middle and we could have seen glimpse of it literally five yeah years, we could have had could a have. Taste, like so that's actually really disappointing and I talked to a few people after the game as well where we all just agreed that even for the atmosphere you'd want to bring him back on you brought Pulisic back on he came back from an injury as well and he when he was swapped off he was he was having a standing ovation and I understand that there was probably a bit of kind of doubt in Potter as well. Obviously, he rushed Reese James in back after his injury and we saw him, you know, come straight mm. back off. So perhaps there was maybe that element you can argue that there, but I do still think he could have easily played five, ten minutes. Kante's got it in him. Absolutely. Like, I don't want to start him. I absolutely get you do not want to start him. But mm -hmm. I mean, by the 90th minute, all the players were still on the pitch will automatically be tired. The chances yeah. of him getting an injury, like you could have easily done it, and I know mm. that would have been the cherry on top. I think for me, this game would have been completed if we put Mudrik on rather than Gallagher. We gave Nani a few minutes as well. Um, can't say by the end of it, and we um, we got those three points. That would have been, that would have been the game for me. What about you? Yeah, no, I pretty much agree. I think the substitutions let us down massively. So obviously that's placed on the manager. Um, but I do think potentially some of the players as well could have maybe I don't know looked to bring us out that game a little bit more and pushed further for that goal because we've got the potential there. We've got the quality there. We could have made it happen. You know, we could have made Absolutely. it happen. But just really quickly before we wrap up, looking forward, we're coming up to some very tight packed schedule with some very difficult fixtures to say the least. Um, we're going to be in and out of the Prem. We're going to look to play Real Madrid in the Champions League. So as much as we want to build on the recent, uh, well, the recent victories we had followed by this draw against Everton, how confident are you that we can really push to maybe move up from 10th position finally? Because I'm honestly sick and tired of being 10th. If we can potentially move out of that 10th position, yeah. put on a better shift in the, the Champions League because we seem to always turn up for those nights. So regardless of how we're going in the Prem, do you think we can really come out of these fixtures with some points, uh, potentially do well in Real Madrid? And what would make that happen? Do you know what? That's probably the worst question you could ask any Chelsea fan, isn't it? Like, it's just so unpredictable. Mm -hmm. I said this in a few interview interviews, in a few episodes, and I've said it in a few of the things I've appeared on on the channel, that I don't really want to believe it until I've seen a winning streak. And mm -hmm. we had three games, and don't know. To be honest, I genuinely don't know. I want... I want to see it before I believe it. And I'm just very yeah. questionable. And like you said, the tough games. And I just hope we can shake this off. I hope we can look back at the other three games and like I hope Pa is able to collect the spot, uh, the, the, the squad. And mm -hmm. I'm just praying. Well, like you said, 
it does take a few prayers to to be a Chelsea fan these days. So I guess that's all we can really rely on. But I think it will be interesting to see how it unfolds. I don't really have many expectations. I'm just going to sit back, watch the games and just see really how far we can take this and where we can go because I think April is going to be a real big test for us the season has been up and down left right and centre we've had more problems than actual you know praises and moments of achievement so it's just good to see where it goes but we will stay tuned there's lots to talk about lots to look forward to but guys honestly thank you for watching this episode and if you haven't subscribed to Chelsea Fan TV do so and drop a comment to let us know what you think about the video. We're really enjoying making this show for you guys. So just please give us some feedback. Let us know. And yes, thank you for watching. Michelle? Thank you for watching, guys. Um, yeah, I think you summed that up beautifully. And um, if you feel like it, check Nina's and my Instagram out. I'll, um, I'll make sure it's in the description. And then we'll see you in the next one, won't we? Yes. Cheers. Bye, guys.